plains in general and their remains have been found. screening operation here. Over the years the river has progressively eroded away major portions of the site so the BLM brought us in this year to recover important information before it's lost. We've identified seven archaeological occupations at this site. The earliest one we have recognized from other excavations in this part of Montana as being about 3,000 years old. But so far, we haven't found anything that allows us to immediately identify the later occupations. We'll be radiocarbon dating those and analyzing samples of animal remains and sediments and soils and so on that will give us uh, the basis for interpreting the culture history of this important site. several locations along the upper Missouri Wild and Scenic River. excavating the Holmes Terrace archaeological site that's located along the upper Missouri Wild and Scenic River in the vicinity of Big Sandy, Montana. Montana State University has contracted with the Bureau of Land Management to recover archaeological materials that are being progressively wasted by river erosion here at this important site. We've been on the ground here for six weeks now, a crew of eight mostly students from Montana State University and have been excavating different sections along this site. In 1975 we discovered it during an earlier reconnaissance and revisited it in 19... Here we're cleaning up a prehistoric occupation surface that will probably date by radiocarbon at about 2,500 years ago. It's characterized principally by widely distributed fire-broken rock from an old fireplace, but there were substantial quantities around the prehistoric hearth. This is a large fireplace that was used in the processing and cooking and burning of uh, bison bone. Considerable amounts of unburnt bison bone were recovered from this floor, as well as some stone artifacts and uh, waste flakes. This floor dates probably about 2,500 years ago and represents the surface occupied by early bison hunters here along the Missouri. On the west wall, you can see the deep stratigraphy there are dark bands and light bands. The light bands represent slope wash 
from behind us on the hillside, and the dark bands represent intervals during which the Missouri was flooding and dumping deposits. Our soil scientist has taken samples here, and he'll be reconstructing the depositional history of this terrace. At least during six intervals, prehistoric peoples occupied this landform, and we'd recovered the bone and tools and fire-broken rock that represents those occupations. This is one of the deepest excavation units along the Holmes Terrace archaeological site. Here we've excavated some 2.8 meters below the modern vegetated surface. surface. In the bottom, you can see the deepest cultural occupation, and then where we have nails with white flags, each of these represent occupied surfaces, but there are a great deal more than that. Uh, scientists. Rolling. Our soil scientist has tentatively identified 11 old uh, surfaces in this particular excavation unit. And as Les mentioned, uh, five of those surfaces were occupied, actually six, counting these two very closely spaced strata. Uh, whereas just downstream, we have eight of those old surfaces that were occupied. Upstream, we have six that were occupied. We do get some correlation between some of those uh, strata between the upstream units and the downstream units. Okay, so we get out of the site. Um, it's set up. Uh, we have a, a water pump down in the river that uh, pumps the water through garden hose up to two box screens. Uh, the lower screen has very fine mesh window screen. The upper screen, which you see here, uh, is a little larger mesh. Um, during the process, we're able to recover very small uh, animal remains and very tiny uh, stone flakes and the sorts of things that might otherwise go unnoticed during troweling and during uh, screening through uh, a little bit larger uh, mesh screen on the manual screens and the power screens. Rolling. Here we're excavating the deepest prehistoric occupation in Holmes Terrace. It's uh, here at this point slightly over 2.9 meters below modern surface. We radiocarbon dated a zone here by reference to bison bone in 1977 and it dated about 1000 BC. But we're now collecting little pockets and pieces of wood charcoal that show up uh, along the deep floor for fresh radiocarbon dating. Here we're looking at bison bone that have been butchered and some which have not been modified. These people were known to be proficient bison hunters that lived in the Rocky Mountain. The Holmes Terrace archaeological site along the upper Missouri Wild and Scenic River in the vicinity of Judith Landing. 
This is an important archaeological site that Montana State University discovered during a site's reconnaissance in 1975. As you know, the Bureau of Land Management has jurisdiction over this part of the river and archaeological sites that are being endangered by erosion and vandalism are under some degree of